Okay, this is part two, and I'm going to demonstrate for you why, uh, you know, first of all, I hope I made it clear in part one that there is no original Bible. It does not exist, but I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully very clearly, that um, we don't need original Bible. And that That's a Islam thing. That's not a Christian thing, okay? So, first of all, uh, let's, uh, I guess, use an example. Um so I'm just kind of winging this all off the top of my head. So Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So in Genesis 9, um, we know that after the flood, that the whole earth was of one language. And then God confounded the language in Genesis. Did I say 9? I meant 11. Okay, so... Um, God confounded the language, and so now uh, there are lots of languages on the earth. And of course, um, Paul talks about where there are tongues, they shall cease. Okay? Um, here in 1 Corinthians 13, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Okay? So all the languages spoken today will not be spoken in the life to come okay we we got further evidence of this in zephaniah 3 this is talking about after the return of our lord jesus christ it says for then will i turn to the people a pure language that they may all call paul uh, call upon the name of the lord to serve him with one consent so in the beginning we had one language and then god confounded the language and made many languages and then there's coming a time when we will all speak one language, a pure language. Okay. Now, let's go take a look at uh, the what Jesus says. Okay. It's kind of important what Jesus says here. Uh, the words that I speak unto you. Here it is. John 6. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. Okay, so the words are spirit and they are life. So uh, it doesn't matter, um, you know, the Bible is not an old Harry Potter book stuck in a language that's long been passed away. All right, the, the word of God is a living spirit. Okay, and... Um, of course, Jesus says, uh, let's see, let's do the heaven, earth, password. Okay. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Right? Makes it very clear. If you didn't get it the first time, maybe you got it the second time. If not that, then the third time. Hopefully, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay, so let's go back to the promises made by God, okay? Uh, see, in Isaiah 59, here it is. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon me, and my, uh, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Okay, so just to be clear, this is very simple. The word of God is going to be in your mouth from that point on and forever. So the word, if you are of the seed of Christ, then you have the word of God in your mouth. You don't need to depend on somebody else's mouth which is what the Catholics try to do. They want you to go to their Catholic priest and priest to know what uh, God really says. That's contrary to what the Bible says, that we have the Word of God in our mouth. Okay. Now, we go, you know, let's go to Psalm 12. In starting verse 6, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. 
Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So the words of God are preserved forever, not in a language, but it's established in heaven, right? So uh, languages come and go, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So let's take a look here, I think, in uh, 1 Peter or 2 Peter. Is it 3 Peter? No, 1 Peter. But the word of the Lord endures forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. All right. Now let's take a look at this chapter. It's boy, I tell you, this is a good chapter. It's a good, it's a good read for sure. Uh, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. All right, so uh, I think we've established that uh, languages come and go, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And there should be no doubt about it. So knowing that, then you should also know that you don't have to depend on an old Harry Potter book or an old writings. You don't have to figure out what this says. Okay, you don't have to you don't have to read that to know what God really says because the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life. Okay, and that that's very important and uh, you know I guess we could uh, demonstrate a little bit here. Uh, Jesus says uh, the scripture cannot be broken. All right, so uh, let's just confirm that. Uh, if he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, right? And so that means it cannot be corrupt. It cannot be, there cannot be an error. There cannot be a contradiction, all right? However, that does not mean that many people uh, don't corrupt the word of God, right? Because we read in 2 Corinthians 2, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. So there are people who are trying to corrupt the word of God, for sure. But you can take comfort knowing that we do have the word of God um, in the King James Bible. All right. So if we took a look, I, I, let's see, let me think about this here. I remember when Moses, uh, he got the... Uh, Ten Commandments, and he smashed them. Oh, what was that? How does that worded in the Bible? Uh, let's see if I can find out. You know, he came down from the mountain. He was, I'm sure he was elated. He was uh, happy and excited. And, uh, and he'd just gotten the Ten Commandments from God. And he comes down. And, uh. Let's see. I think it was a break. Is that the word I'm looking for? I can't. I can't see. But anyways, hopefully you know the Bible as well as I do. And uh, so what happened was uh, he came down off the mountain and he saw all these people worshiping a golden calf, and he got angry. And uh, he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. So that's what Moses thought of the originals, right? So if Moses put that much into the originals, then why would you revere them more than Moses did? He got them directly from God. And it, it, the, what's written on the tablets is, is not, uh, how do I say this? It's, it doesn't, you know, if you destroy the tablets, you don't destroy the word of God, right? All right, so I hope I understand. I'm making my point clear there. Um, so, uh, my I guess my overall point is we can trust the Bible, okay? And then our friend here, Alex, reads that his native tongue is Italian, and I don't know a lick of Italian either. This could be Italian for all I know. I don't know, right? But I appreciate the comment and uh, the opportunity to go over this stuff.